mask on. And I think that's the biggest problem for people is that it's not okay. It's not okay to be you. We're, we're in a world where we're, we have to measure up, right? And, and, and we're being told it's not okay to, to just be who we are. So then we grow up with that, that belief system of that it's not okay to feel the way we're feeling, right? And it's not okay to show these feelings. So people come into therapy not being able to be trans... This is Scratch Your Own Itch, the one show that delivers the conversations that we're afraid to share, but need to. This show is all about creating a life worth living. I'm Logan Tyler Nelson, and I'm your host. So you're going to hear conversations with creators and entrepreneurs talk about what they do, their current and past traumas, how they became who they are, and what they are truly curious about. This is the show where we talk about the things we think about a lot, but need to talk about more. Please take note that this show is not a substitute for actually creating a life worth living, because this show will stir your beliefs, make you question what it means to create a life worth living. So my promise to you is to always give you one question to answer for yourself today, to start turning your dreams into a reality. So, my curiosity question for you is, what's the difference between knowing something and understanding something, but actually implementing that understanding into practice? Okay, so let me set the tone. The story you tell yourself right now about getting in great shape or you know, getting yourself into an area in which you start to love yourself is critical. All right, because honestly, it, it it feels like heartbreaking suicide reports have recently been all over the news. We've been shocked by the celebrity deaths of people like Robin Williams and Chris Cornell, and there have also been so many teenagers, adolescents, and adults who have committed suicide, such as the widely publicized death of the 15-year-old Audrey Pot who is now the focus of a new Netflix documentary. Indeed, our world has been rocked by millions of people taking their own lives because they feel trapped with no way out. If you didn't know this, suicide remains the 10th leading cause of death for people of all ages. Suicide is also the second leading cause of death for adolescents and teenagers aged 10 to 19 years. So why is it though? Why is it that these people that have a seemingly amazing life know what it takes to get help, but they still don't do it? And these statistics, they are scary. Well, if any of this resonates with you, or maybe you're interested in helping someone but you just don't know how, then this episode is for you. Because I have a master who, who has literally devoted and dedicated her life to solving problems with people such as these. Her name is Pamela Tinkham. She's a licensed psychotherapist and a certified yoga therapist. She is a spiritually based psychotherapy practice with an emphasis in mindfulness and meditation. She's the author of Healing Trauma from the Inside Out, practices from the East and West. So, give a warm welcome to the one and only Pamela Tinkham. Hey, Pamela. Hey, how are you? Thank you so much for having me today. I really appreciate it. And I think it's the most meaningful thing I could do on a day like today, on a beautiful sunny day here in Connecticut, where I am. Nice, uh, yeah. To, to bring, you know, to bring hope and meaning and to share a little about, you know, what happens. And it's a very loaded topic, um, wanting to end it, right? 
Yeah, I, it is um, absolutely the hardest question to ever answer. But, you know, the mission of the show is to, to make someone feel less alone and to also learn how someone can scratch their own itch, which means solving a problem that they have with themselves. And by doing so, they're also doing it for others. So how have you gotten to where you are today by scratching your own itch? Well, I was... Um, not helping field. I was actually in theater a long time ago and uh, went through a very difficult time uh, being down at the towers at 9-11, running from my life. Um, and between that and going through a divorce at that time, I think that probably uh, was the lowest point in my life where, you know, instead of coming out of that thinking, oh my God, I survived this. I was a block away. I, you know, I got, I was rescued. I, I, got out of this alive. I didn't think of the positives. I fell into that deep place that a lot of people uh, fall into um, and post-traumatic stress disorder, etc., because they, it was completely overwhelmed, right? And so from that moment on, I um, decided that I wanted to help as many people as I possibly could who are going through that horrible overwhelm where they feel like there's no out and what I realized in getting to a, getting into a helping profession and although it took years of schooling and um, you know research to do the book um, etc but what I did realize in the process is is that if you can change one life and it's kind of, it's kind of what you're saying you know on your sh on your show um, I've heard you say it numerous times if you can just change one life if you can make a difference in one person's life, um, a day, you know, that actually brings you more hope and it actually helps lift you out of that darkness or that place of overwhelm where your nervous system can't seem to reset. Um, when you start to reach out to others, that, that lonely self-focus, cause we all have this pit inside of us, um, that needs to be filled and we all fill it with different, in different ways, or we try to, uh, but if you can reach out and help others, it is definitely one way of healing, you know, and probably the, the most effective way of healing. And that's how I got into the profession um, of, of healing um, because of my own. And it, also to add on to that, um, you know, there are many, we are very uh, blessed to live in America. And I would say that um, as a woman in America, we, we, you know, we haven't been abused the way some women in other countries have been um, but needless to say, our abuse, if we witnessed abuse when we were children versus otherworldly abuse um, on a macro level, the nervous system af can be affected the same way. So even though our traumas might be less than another country and we want to look at the whole world, right, and be, you know, um, helping on a global level, believe it or not, um, even though we're so blessed in this country, our, our own traumas, our own nervous system can be equally as as a country who's had a uh, more abuse than you can right so um so with that said the the um, i witnessed domestic violence when i was a child and growing up with that didn't really give me the tools to deal with 9 11 and a divorce at the same time so then everything at once um i wasn't able to separate the traumas and deal with so um over time i learned how to how to separate and the thing is the word separate is a really good word because you have to separate all, all the traumas in your life you have to do one at a time and you have to look at them as one at a time hope that makes sense to you yeah it does absolutely um the thing is that i i'm like i just i am troubled by it because like we live in a world nowadays where like uh, information is 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 an it's, it's abundant, right? So like, we're not scarce at all. Like, it, we know all the exercises, we know, uh, you know, uh, we or we have at least the access and the resources to understanding ourselves as human beings. Um, why do you think your average uh, patient comes in and knows how to get help? but they still just don't implement the, the exercises or the, the ideologies that you try to give to them in you their know, life. Yeah, and I think this, is, um, this can go back to all of us, even you and I, even though we're, we try to unmask and we try to be um, authentic, right? 
And but we are in a world where we have to sometimes have a mask on. And I think that's the biggest problem for people is that it's not OK. It's not OK to be you. We're, we're in a world where we're, we have to measure up. Right. And, and, and we're being told it's not OK to, to just be who we are. So then we grow up with that that belief system of that. It's not OK to feel the way we're feeling. Right. And it's not OK to show these feelings. So people come into therapy not being able to be transparent, not really um, understanding, you know, with a lot of shame and embarrassment and not really being able to um, expose themselves and feel safe enough to do that in the world. Uh, Because that's a very courageous act to go out there and be exposed. So someone who's got looks like they've got it all and then they become very depressed well they they don't want to disappoint all their fans right i mean look at all the famous people that have killed themselves right it's like you know they, it's like they, they don't feel like they can take the mask off so they don't reach out to people that could actually help right so if they do end up in the therapy room that is like beautiful like that's the best thing it's one of the best things but i'm i can't certainly support i i can be a support in the room and actually i am one of those therapists that i do allow my clients to text me as long as it's not um you know as long as it's not taken advantage of but you know definitely text if you need the support and when i get to it i'll get to it um and i will respond Uh, even if it's just a little smiley face to to say it's going to be okay or a little prayer hands right a little namaste hands um, but it's really, really important that outside the therapy room that people are also seeking out supports outside the therapy room, family, um, friends, you know, a lot of people that become suicidal, they, they haven't even shared with their friends that something's going on. So, um, communication, and we talk about the chakras in Eastern philosophy, that's a throat chakra, which is blue and it's for authentic communication and communication, I would say is the biggest thing that people are afraid to speak their truth. Um, and that's what really is the downfall of many emotional and, uh, dysregulated nervous systems is that, um, people are not living their truth or speaking their truth. Could you go a little bit more into how your nervous system has sort of like a memory of a trauma that may uh, be totally unconscious. Like you, you might actually be in a situation where you're reacting to to some thing that is totally surprising you. For example, because of the trauma that you maybe experienced ten years ago, just because of a sound or it's just right. because of you know. Like I would love for you to sort of expound upon that. Well, um, there's a few things, a few ways to approach it, but it's, again, a very loaded topic. But why don't we just talk about, like, fight, flight, freeze response in the nervous system. Um, So, and I'll give the example of, I'll give the example of um, 9-11. Okay, so um, fight and flight. So the towers were imploding, but they looked like, actually, for those of us who were down there, they actually looked like they were falling towards us. So the first one, when it imploded, if you were a block away, which I was, it didn't look like it was going into the ground. It looked like it was actually falling over. So it really was like running, running, running for your life, right? Um, and then I got in a parked car and it hit. So the, the, the flight, not the fight response, but the flight to flee the area, right? The, fl- the flight response was, was thwarted. I had to get in a parked car and then all the debris hit and the smoke hit. And so I'm in the midst of it praying for my life, right? So, so, so because the, um, that nervous system got stuck, right, in the flight response, and it didn't get to, I didn't get to run away before, the, before it hit, right, that would affect me. It's called hypervigilance. So in, in current situations, because um, the noise was so, so, so loud, it sounded like, I guess if you heard a firecracker, it would be similar to the sound, Um, but it was so profound that for years after that, I mean, years, probably seven, at least seven years, um, if I heard like a firecracker, if I heard any kind of sound similar, it would be create what's called hypervigilance where my, I would be, I would react, um, you know, in a, uh, a very, very, um, exaggerated fashion. So I might, I might like jump under a table or something if I heard the firecracker sound, you know? Um, because just because the nervous system got stuck and it wasn't able to move through, I wasn't able to really run away from the situation. Right. So, um, so these are situations where, um, 
where that's how the nervous system would get stuck. Another uh, client of mine who was um, sexually molested um, froze. She was in the freeze response. We got fight, flight, freeze. She froze. She couldn't move. Um, and then, um, this person who was supposed to be a doctor went on to do what he wanted to do. And she was frozen the entire time. So that's what, that's where her nervous system got stuck. And we worked in session to work on the fight. What would you have done? And then we really worked through and visualized the entire situation, but using, using yoga actually in the session to work out the fight response, um, so that she could fight, you know, the next time someone on the street in New York, um, even, even tried to like pinch her ass or something, anyway, excuse the French on your show. But anyway, when that happened, she actually punched the guy, like it actually worked that we worked on the fight response. And the next time someone tried to abuse her in any way, she was able to fight. So that's the nervous system, fight, flight, freeze. And it's just like you have to unlock, you have to go back and unlock where you got stuck, find where you got stuck and then unlock it. You know what I love about um, why I'm a fan of your work is is that you don't use the mind as a way to get in and then also the body as a way to get in. Like you use both and you mend it together. And I think that's where we often fall off. Um, uh, one of my my teachers slash mentors in college, you know, she taught me like in college, you know, most colleges like, you know, College of Business, for example, they work in this way where it's like it's cut off at your neck and to the top of your head. And you're only supposed to learn and embody something with your head. Or now you go to the gym and now it's just a working out thing. But your practice, I think, works in your favor because you're a practitioner of both yoga and psychotherapy, and and so to blend those two, it's so, it's 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 a, I think it's a true art. Um, and um, one thing I really gotta ask that like, I've been just like waiting, and I'm just curious about like, um, because I know what it's like to be depressed. I know what it's like to be yes. in a in a what's that. I said, unfortunately, most of us know. We've all we've all been there. Yeah, and to like when you're in that vulnerable state, though, to like when someone actually is trying to help you, you just want to like push them out, and 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 like it's really hard to let them in because you just you think you can handle it all yourself. Um, what is that one thing for you that maybe uh, you've realized that you've discovered through? you know, literally working on hundreds of patients going, okay, we need to try the, I mean, you've already given out so many other exercises, but maybe one exercise that they could do at home to see if they qualify for themselves to maybe like get help and, and, and really take it more seriously. Um, I'm sorry. I just want to clarify the ex. You want to know what exercise to make someone feel like they can actually do this, or what would make them want to enter therapy? Yeah, well, like, I mean, because there are so many ways that fe- people feel like they can get help, like from their very computer, for example. Okay. Um, right. And so, like, what actually do you think is is a is a thing people can do to qualify themselves? to actually go into the therapist's office? Well, looking at, uh, there's a mirror exercise um, that you can look yourself in the eyes in the mirror and no matter how bad you're feeling, you can say a mantra. This is just one out of many exercises, but you can really look yourself. I, I think this one is effective because you're really looking in your soul when you look in your eyes and you know, you can either say, I am okay, or I accept myself, or I love myself, but really be okay with looking who that person is in the mirror, even, even, so it's almost, almost like fake it till you'll make it, The one of the 12 stuff sayings, right, but um, even if you don't believe yourself, and even if you feel like you are faking it, you're still looking yourself in the mirror, and you're still facing yourself and saying, I can do this. I can do this, or I'm okay, or I love myself, or if you, God is your higher power, or whatever your higher power is, you know, I'm one with God, I'm one with the universe, I'm one with nature, but looking at yourself, and then taking that from the eyes and the soul, and bringing it back 
into the feeling of the body. This is also called somatic experiencing. I just wanted to add that um, somatic experiencing, Peter Levine's work, um, is what I incorporate into the yoga psychotherapy. Um, and that is, this is what somatic experiencing is. You look yourself in the eye and then drop into your body. Just imagine dropping into your body and feeling what's on the inside. You know, and the third in the solar plexus, that's your third chakra, your energy center, and it's yellow, right? So you could even wear yellow that day just to get yourself to call the therapist because the first phone call is actually the hardest, right? But, you know, really face yourself, stand tall, shoulders back, smile even if you have to fake it because it's going to change your physiology. Look yourself in the eye even if you hate yourself and you want to kill yourself. Just look yourself in the eye and say, I can do this. And, you know, once you pick up that phone and make that first phone call, the relief, uh, the relief of just reaching out just to a professional actually takes away half the depression in itself before the therapy begins. Hey, Logan Tyler Nelson here. I would so appreciate it if you took some time to hit the subscribe button. I really want to just honestly live and give. Why? Because I was told when I was young that if you're feeling down, the best way to feel better is by lifting someone up again. So in an effort to make someone feel less alone, please hit the subscribe button so the podcast has a better chance of being found and making someone feel less alone. And if you're feeling down, hey, it can help you. Know that by hitting that subscribe button, you just did someone a huge favor. So thank you for hitting that subscribe button. Yeah, and I want to just say that it's amazing how um, inside your head something can seem crazy. And, and I, you know, I wrote my first um, my book that's currently in edits about that same thing. It just felt like, you know, which thought to listen to, well, you know, and it, there's so many thoughts that come up in your head. Like, you know, I don't want to do this interview or I don't want to I don't want to call. I don't want to. I don't want to go work out. I don't want to like, I don't want to do this. And then it's, it's funny how they often talk about, um, how the worst part about skydiving is actually being on the plane when you're completely safe. And then once you jump off and you're fly and you're free falling, excuse me one second. Sure. Um, so yeah, once you're free falling and you're, and you're actually like feeling the wind in your face, everything's okay. And exactly. so, it's so odd how that works. Yeah. Yeah. Our minds can really, really trip us up and, and it's very hard. You know, I have people sign a, um, a no harm contract if they, uh, dis display signs of suicidal ideation and that just to write down three phone numbers of who they could call if they are having those thoughts. Um, and you know, often they'll write down names, but they won't call these people because <laughs> it's too, you know, and especially like the higher up in, uh, in the hierarchy in of life that you get, you're more, you, the shame and the embarrassment is even worse because then you, you feel like you're, you know, you're in a whatever powerful position. You could certainly couldn't call on people and tell them that you're suffering. Um, again, it goes back to the mask that, you know, we feel like we have to wear, but it's not okay to share these things or to be vulnerable in public. And, and sometimes it's not okay. And I, that's why people have that, that, uh, isolation. Cause sometimes it really isn't okay. Sometimes our friends are not the friends we thought they were, and they're not going to respond very well. Yeah. Oh, that's, um, that is the hardest part. Um, gosh, eh. um, I want to go into scratching the surface curiosity questions, or this is just um, sort of like to get to know you a little bit more, make someone feel less alone, and also uh, to maybe um, do a shameless plug of where to find you, because if they are resonating with your work, I know that it is hard to reach out, but if any of this at all is resonating with you, I promise by taking just that one step further of just making the call like Pamela said it often helps your depression right away and and to even admit that you are sad I think is just a or not sad because depression isn't always equated to sadness but to just admit that you want things to get better is just I think a a great place to start from so let's go into scratching the surface curiosity questions and the first question I have for you is um uh sort of a giving givings question is is maybe a thought or something that you did that you're a little ashamed about sharing but you know you know you're human and and so um 
Why not share it? <laughs> okay. Um, along the lines of anything you're talking about in any context. Yeah, I could I could uh, specify for you, but if you want. No, no, you know what? I'll give you something absolutely that happened even today because um, being on the interview with you, you know, there's also a feeling that I have to be certain um, amount of of um, there has to be a certain amount of professionalism because I'm a therapist and I'm an author and uh, you know wrote this book on healing trauma, right? And then just today I was kind of falling apart myself. <laughs> And I, that's what I felt like I needed to put my mask back on to be on the interview. Um, and I'm just, uh, I guess, embarrassed and shame, yeah, came up because I, you know, I had my own um, major, major thing. My my marriage is on the rocks and I'm, you know, I, I, I reached out to a friend and I was crying an hour ago and I said, I got to pull myself together for 2.15. I don't know how I'm going to do this. So, um, and that was just an hour ago. So, yeah, that brought up embarrassment and shame because I knew that we scheduled this interview. Wow. Pamela, um, thank you for sharing that. Uh, I really want to just honestly give you the biggest virtual hug ever um, (laughs) because we're not sitting right next to each other, but uh, honestly the biggest virtual hug because that just uh, fills up my heart to to know that, um, you know, even even our masters and the people that we're leading – um, or we look up to, uh, even they have these these crazy thoughts, which makes them even better teachers because they know what we're going through when we are leading them. So, um, or or vice versa, you know. Um, yeah. So. And the good thing is, as much as I didn't want to reach out to this friend because I was embarrassed, and I was very embarrassed, um, I reached out anyway. Yeah. And I, that's the message. That is, that and is I hated, hated, hated this person seeing me in that light, you know, because they only saw me as a real professional, um, having it all together all the time type of person. And I, you know, it was a hard phone call, but it was a good one. Ah, I'm so happy that you took that, uh, that leap of bravery and did it. Uh, I really think, uh, your friend now probably thinks much higher of you. Um, but, um, Another question I really like to ask you is, is uh, how much with what you have desired was truly like a desire of your own? And how much do you think that your own desire was, was, was not your own but someone else's? You know, in this kind of world that we live in now today where we're just influenced by so much. Desire for what? So, desire of your own, like your own mm-hmm. truth. How are you finding mm-hmm. your own truth? Good. Okay. No, this is a um, great question. Uh, this desire is definitely my own of, of the di- desire to help people that are in pain. Um, and it just comes from my innate being of having been there. Um, and everyone is different. You know, some people don't suffer as much emotionally because their skin, you know, we call them like that they have a little bit of a thicker skin. And it's actually kind of true. Some people really do. I know some people are a little more resilient and they haven't had that kind of emotional pain. Um, because I never had a thick skin, my dad used to always say to me, come on, Pam, you have to toughen up. You know, it just wasn't me. And so I, because I've been there, you know, and I've been there since childhood, um, I, you know, I can feel, I have the empathy to feel. And I, and I, it comes from, it's like, it's almost like, um, I would say either God, universe, or nature, but like my divine, my divinity is is so strongly speaking out. It's almost like it's coming out of my soul. Like if I'm not helping others, I'm not fulfilling my divine life mission and purpose, um, and I'm not happy when I'm not helping others. So it's um it's so so organic. I mean, it's definitely my truth. I love that. Um, I want to flip it on its head though and ask you: Is there ever any other job, though, that you sometimes want to try out? <laughs> You're going to laugh, but I'm going to tell you no. 
<laughs> my husband would tell you like that all I do is read self-help books and psychology books and uh, actually I'm going to be teaching at Fordham uh, Graduate School of Social Service in the uh, starting at the end of the summer so I'm really really reading textbooks now too so anyway um, is there a, I can't you know I can't I used to perform singer dancer so you know if, if there was anything that I might go back to in life at some point um, would be singing and dancing because I, I think that that is just um, so spiritual and my soul just loves it and yearns for it. So right now, what I do as a hobby, if I ever, um, yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, because you can you can hold an audience and if you can show vulnerability on the stage, you can affect and, and really help in someone's healing um, by being real, you know, a real um, solid um, organic performer. Um, you know, I remember when I was performing years ago in my 20s, I used to look people in the eyes in the audience. I wanted to make that connection, you know, and, and have someone smile. So I, I would go back to stage for sure. Wow. Yeah. I, um, I studied acting in college and did four and a half years before that. Um, so I know what it, uh, acting and performing is um, something that's incredibly cathartic for scary uh, but it's very cathartic at the same time for anyone that wants to try it out, um, that wants to just kind of like, uh, I think the best way to just do it is just to join an improv group or something like that um, and just yeah, go how into scary it. Is that? <laughs> what was that? And I said, and how scary is that? Like for me to join an improv, that would be scary. I like to have like rehearsals, you know? <laughs> so. Oh, but, uh, God. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, rehearsals. Uh, I think rehearsals are worse than actually improv because rehearsals, you got, you know, there's lines to be memorized, and if you're not on your lines, like with improv, it's just whatever. I can say whatever I want whenever I want. Yeah, yep. That's probably a skill that you have. That's that's great. That's great. Yeah. Um. Yeah. All right. So I want to go into a few, like last five questions, which is just short, thirty second or less answers. Okay. Um, but uh, the first question is, if you could sit on a bench with anyone for an hour, who would it be and why? I think it would be Oprah. And I just feel I just feel from her that she is so um, such a um, role model for women and for women's empowerment. Um, and, you know, I don't want to um, leave out any genders, so I don't know um, if she's empowering for others that would feel that same way. But for me, I feel that she's just been um, just a very empowering person. And I would love to sit and talk with her because she's very spiritual as well, um, just about her spiritual beliefs and what makes her tick as well. Well, I can tell you she's very helpful for anyone that's interested in interviewing people, whether you're a male or a female, because she's one of the best in her, in her field at interviewing. So... 100 yeah. um, percent how do you like to consume content blogs podcasts audiobooks movies how do I like to I I actually read my uh, um, I was reading a book on my iPhone yesterday so I think I'm not a traditional reader I haven't done a lot of audio so how do I consume yeah I would say um, and then listening listening i think i'm a, i'm in my 50s so i'm in a little bit of an older generation that isn't on as many podcasts as as my clients who are in their 20s and 30s so i definitely um i feel like i need to branch out more into that area instead of being old-fashioned just reading which is <laughs> what i am now i'm very kind of old-fashioned that way well, Pamela, um, I guarantee if somebody saw the picture of you, they wouldn't think you're 50 for a second. Um, <laughs> That's a good thing. I'm glad. It's because I'm petite. I'm only five feet, and that helps the, you know, and in shape. So, you know, it helps It helps the appearance and the energy of being more youthful. So thank you. You're so welcome. Uh, the thing is, though, um, you know, if we, you want to talk about more podcasts, I would love to uh, help you find some more podcasts uh because i'm a past i'm a podcast uh junkie you know yeah. some people are self-help junkies i'm a podcast junkie for sure um cool. but your way is not the wrong way at all i think learning through visual text and being able to highlight and then talk about it and speak about it is 
the only way to learn. Like, really, like, if you're not doing it that way, if you're not talking mm-hmm. or really processing thoughts that other people are having when you're consuming text, then just forget it, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I feel, and I, and when people, were, when I published the book and people were buying the Kindle, I felt like, oh, no, no, you need to get the hard, you need to get the soft cover. Like, I, I, for some reason, it was like, because there's artwork that a, a, a former client did on it that's just beautiful. And and I felt like the healing comes from the t- touching this actual book. Like, I, I really, really believe that, that actually having it on your nightstand can bring healing, you know, because there's like Reiki energy in it. And it's, um, and so anyway, but that that's just my, uh, it's my my belief so yeah are you someone who's trying to build your online presence and you're finding out that it takes some time a lot of time and someone might recommend hey you should write a book and become an expert in that area so you're known for that one thing well a book (laughs) as I've gone through it and come to find takes a long time It takes about another year and a half. But that doesn't mean that you can't become known for your thing. I think the best way to do this is through starting a podcast and getting a website out there that can archive all the work and the content and the area of expertise that you want to be known for. Because you want to be the go-to guy when someone thinks of... Hey, I want to get in really good shape, but heck, I don't know what it's going to take. And you know that your area of supremacy, as I dub it, is to get someone into really great shape. And what if you could bring on other influencers that already have a name for themselves online onto your own podcast to create content to rank in really well to be to be the go-to guy when it comes to being the enthusiast that you wish you were online to be the influencer that you wish you were online to be known as the expert if you look at what's been happening in the world It's all going towards online. So if you're still running a business and overhead's high, please reach out. Logan at LoganTylerNelson.com And this is a service where it's a done-for-you podcast. We'll get you systematically hooked up to where you have a website, your podcast, and it really gets you on the roll So where your job is just to come and have the fun part, which is interviewing the experts that you wish you could align yourself with more and to start actually making some noise and disrupt this whole idea that it takes another year to get really known for your area of expertise. So if this at all interests you, just Email me, logan at logantylernelson.com. Again, that's logan at logantylernelson.com. Um, so give us a glimpse of your morning routine. Like, what's the first three things that you usually do? Well, I definitely wake up and with gratitude, no matter how bad I might be feeling I'll I'll um my first is prayer and gratitude you know thanking God for a day and you know another day of being able to wake up and to go out there and help others so I I usually try to do three things I'm grateful for and then three things that I would like to manifest in my life um and then I look at the day before and I just think about um yesterday's shining moment and then think about the, the best thing that happened the day before so that I can bring that with me into the day. So really start the day with gratitude. And there's a Hebrew prayer I start the day with as well called the Shema. Um, and it just goes Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. 
and its hero Israel. The Lord is one. The Lord is God, our God. The Lord is one. It's just what, which means that the Lord is within us. So God is within us. God is out there, um, and and God is everywhere. You know, that's pretty much what it means. So I always start the day with that. Very, very cool. Very cool. I just think it's very important for. Um... You know, people get ideas about other people's morning routines, so that's why I asked that question. Um, but uh, what is a go-to pump-up song for you? Do you have one? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Lately, um, from The Greatest Showman, the movie with Hugh Jackman, I um, there's a few. I'm going on my phone. This Is Me is is a very, like, I, that song gets me right out of a funk. The song This Is Me. And then there's one called Come Alive. Um and then the one Hugh Jackman and uh, Zach Efron, they sing this song called um, The Other Side. It's about like leaving the fake life, you know, and going into the circus, but going into something more real. So like less money, less, um, you know, societal, um, whatever, uh, approval, but coming alive into your passion, right? So that, so depending on what my mood is, I've, those three songs have been, um, you know, really, really helping me with my, my, um, struggles, um, with being able to stay in my own power, um, and be, be married because I think we lose some of our identity when we get married. I think it happens to everybody. So those, yeah, I, I, that movie was very empowering for me. That's cool. I think it's time, Pamela, for you to rewatch that movie. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, no, you can get it on pay per view. I saw it in the movie theater with my dad, and I was like, um, you know, I didn't know what to expect, and um, I don't know, I wasn't really somehow I wasn't allowed to go to the circus when my class went when I was a kid. I don't know why, but I wasn't, and I just felt deprived of my childhood <laughs> because I wasn't allowed to go. And uh, yeah, it was it's cool. You're right, it's a very healing movie, but not just for me. I mean, I think that it's uh, it's very empowering. I don't know if you have you seen it. No, I have not, but I'm going. I, I'm going to check it out now. Well, yeah, because it's really about accepting everyone for who they are. Because he, you know, P.T. Barnum found all the people that were like the so-called freaks back then that you know might have been completely different. And so it's all about accepting people for who they are and not their shell, but their their total soul. And it's it's really about that. Oh well, I would love to talk about that for hours, but unfortunately, I gotta kind of move on maybe i'll we'll have we'll have another episode about you know being able to find your tribe you know because i think yeah. when we find your tribe like you know when people say to me like oh i'm weird like i do this and i'm like yes i guess like you are my kind of people if you say you're weird because yeah. uh that gives a real insider of 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 the way you sort of think yeah um yeah. two more yeah. questions um what is one place where people can find you the most just that one place Okay, so I think um, email is wonderful because I can get to it in between clients easily. Um, and it's just my name, Pamela Tankum at gmail.com. So it's P-A-M-E-L-A-T-I-N as in Nancy K-H-A-M at gmail. Um, and then on Amazon, the book is on Amazon and Kindle. And right under my name, you'll find it. Awesome. Uh, yeah, and I would say that that's the quickest way to get to me, and then we can, from there, you know, from there I give out um, specifics. I just, yeah, I like to keep it simple just so people aren't like, oh, I should do this, I should do that, I should do it. Right. No, just uh, check just her out. Yeah. Pamela is amazing. Don't, I didn't make this podcast just for you to, like, listen to one guest and then hit next and then listen to another guest and hit next. It's like, no, you listen to this person, if they spoke to you at all and, and it's truthful and it's honest and, and, and you took a breath at all during this entire interview and you're like, wow, I need this person in my life. Please do not wait. Pamela is there for you. I'm there for you. Um, and it's, it's, it's an honor and an absolute privilege to even be in your ears right now. So, uh, you know, Pamela and I don't take that at all. Uh, for granted but the last thing i'd like to leave out is a self-inquisitive question that the person that's listening to this right now can kind of ask themselves throughout the day okay so oh. what is that what is that question <laughs> <laughs> okay the question is what would make me feel alive what would make me feel alive like for me dance but what would make you feel alive 
I love that, and I think uh, we will end it there, and I want to just say thank you so much, Pamela, for coming on the show, but yes, think about that. What thank you. I'm you honored feel. that you had me. I really am. Thank you so much. Oh, you're so welcome. Absolutely. All right, what would make you feel more alive and go after that? All right, there's another episode of Scratch Your Own Itch. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to support the show by listening. Um, the biggest compliment you could ever pay me is just by sharing this because honestly, it doesn't take much and it feels so good when people create something and take time. And when I see someone take time to create something that really just changed my day, either made me feel less alone, maybe put a smile on my face, made me laugh made me feel wiser. I always want to share it with the world because why? When I share something that resonates with me, why not share it? I mean, that's just kind of the thing that goes around and it's free. It takes no time at all other than just a click of the button, share on either Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, any of those social media platforms would be great to share this. So I really appreciate it. And I want to say that um, anybody who's looking to gain authority or expertise in their area and they don't want to take another year or year and a half to write a book and wait until that's published, I think the best way is right now is to start a podcast. So if you're at all interested in starting a podcast, if you meet the certain requirements, I would love to help you with a podcast and also get a website going for you as well. And this is not an easy task. It's hard to actually get it done and get it out there. So every now and then we need some help and I'm here for you. So please reach me at Logan at LoganTylerNelson.com if you're interested at all. And don't ever forget, you matter and you're enough.